So today we are going to be looking at the MAD, which is the mean absolute deviation. And you're going to learn what the MAD is, how to calculate it, and then you will have to calculate the MAD for your data points. So the first thing we need to do is we need to order our data points from least to greatest. And my question is how many soft drinks do seven randomly sampled LDI students have each day? Um, and I have my data points listed. So now, listing them in order from least to greatest, I have three ones. So I will write one, 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 a two, two fours, and an eight. The second thing we want to do is create a dot plot. And this dot plot, you just need to put an X on top of the number on the number line corresponding to each data point. So we have three ones which means I need to actually draw three X's to correspond with those data points. I have a two, two fours, and an eight. So now that I have my dot plot, the next thing I need to do is draw a triangle or the balancing point under the mean. But that means I have to calculate the mean. So here are my data points. And in calculating the mean, we add all of those points together. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 8 equals 21. And I have seven data points, which means my mean is three. So if the mean is three, I'm going to draw a triangle or a balancing point under that. And this is going to help me understand the concept of a deviation. A deviation is the number of units... Um, or you can think of them as steps or spaces away from the mean. So what do I mean by that? We have our mean as 3. Well, how many steps or spaces away is 2? Well, I only have to go back one step, okay? So I only have to move one space. That's the deviation. That's how far away from the mean my data point 2 is. I have 1 as a data point as well, and 1 is 2 steps away, okay? But I don't just have... 1 as only one point, I have three data points of 1. So I have two steps, two steps, and two steps. So in total, moving from the mean back, negative deviations, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I've gone back 7 deviations. We can do the same thing moving from the mean to the right um, or the positive side of the balancing point. So again, I have one step and I have another one step, two deviations already. And then I'm going from the mean all the way out to data point eight. And that would be one, two, three, four, five steps away. So in total, I have one, 2 plus 5 is 7. I have 7 deviation points to the right. So in looking at number 5, what is the relationship between your deviations, positive and negative, or to the left and to the right, and the balancing point? The relationship is that they are equal. The number of deviations, the total number of deviations, are equal. I have a total of seven, seven deviations on both sides.
So now we have to figure out what is this MAD? The MAD is the mean absolute deviation. Remember, mean also means average. So we are just trying to find the average of these deviations. And where the absolute comes in is the idea of absolute value. Okay? And absolute value is figuring out how many steps away it is from zero or taking a negative number and making it positive in its simplest form. So I already did the first one, the data point of 1. 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. And then you can see I take that negative 2 and I take the absolute value, which is a positive 2. I would do the same thing in each column and complete my chart. So why don't you go ahead and complete your chart and I'm going to push pause and be back in just a second. And voila! Hopefully you took some time to finish up your chart. If not, again, push pause and make sure you can finish it up. But I have finished up my chart here, and now what I'm going to do is I am going to find the total number of deviations that are listed in my chart here. So I'm going to add, I'm going to take 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 5. And I find out that my total number of deviations is 14. This is the sum of those absolute value of your deviations. So now I need to take the total or the sum of those absolute value deviations. And that total or sum that we just found was 14. And I'm dividing that by the total number of data points. And the total number of data points that I had were 7, which leaves me with 2. My MAD, my mean absolute deviations, is 2. Now, what does that mean? What that mean, what the MAD really tells us, what the MAD tells us is that on average, think about we're using the word mean, so that means on average most points, most of our data points have a deviation Remember, that's how many spaces away from the mean. Have a deviation of 2. In this case, units. Maybe yours is in inches, maybe years, maybe minutes. Think about what you're um, measuring in. Have a deviation of 2 units from the mean. So the mean absolute deviation, 2, tells us that most of our units in this data set have a deviation on average of two units. So now what are your tasks? You have two of them. You need to find the MAD for both of your samples. That means you are going through completing what you just did twice the MAD for both of your samples. Then you need to compare the mats explaining what they mean and which group has more variance. Now this is a word I haven't quite used yet, variance. Variance is the same as the idea of deviations. Which ones vary the most from the mean? Okay, so you're trying to find the mad for both of your samples, then you're comparing them to see which one has more variance, more deviation from the mean. Why do you think that is? You need to critically think about this. Okay? Make sure you write this up nicely before, that you, before you type. This is all part of your write-up for your project. Good luck!